What's up everyone Kaze no what if is here with what if Luffy had the mimic mimic no me before we start if you like the video like it share with your friends comment and let's start the video. Comments. Sorry wanted all in one but taking a while on the new ship still a carvel just bigger and wanted to give all of you a walkthrough. Sending first half of arc now. All. I will try to respond to comments or questions but keeping it brief if it's a long comment I will send a PM to the person, I don't want comments getting too big. Insane Makayashin, no he avoided letting Garp know because of marines and fear. However there are more heightened places to learn secrets. Speed yes, walking on air not for a while. Nami for life, thank you. I like progression and not instant greatness. Sent PM. Disclaimer, I don't own One Piece or any of its characters. Thoughts example. Words example. Noise. Action. The man who cried pirate. After eating breakfast Nami turns to me what was that when your hat got hit? All of Buggy's men that had woken up dropped and were foaming at the mouth like wild dogs. Also how did you survive the bomb with no damage to your hat or clothes? But a knife cut your hat later. Seeing as I was caught I answered hacky. There are three types. Didn't learn the technical term and the person I learned of it from just knew of it and couldn't use it. Some call it your spiritual energy. It can be used for three things to sense people's spiritual energy and predict their actions, give the user a protective coating of spiritual energy. And for a certain group of the ability to overpower the willpower of others. Of course the last one is only one in several million chances to have it. I am decent in the first observation and lose track under stress. I am very good at armament which is the second. I have a good level of power in third but not much control especially when mad. As you remember from the boat when we first met Nami. Hanging my head. A stern look crossed Nami's face. Hey. None of that mister you said your apology already and I expected it so there. Sticking her tongue out at me. Sests. Okay I'll try. Zoro with a puzzled look you said the last is one in several million. What about the first two? Anybody can learn. All living things. Though they are extremely hard to learn, usually armament is only unlocked in life or death struggle. It is worth it though if someone was made of let's say mud your swords would be useless and if he covers your face game over. With armament on your swords you could cut him like he was flesh and bone even kill him. With a doubtful look Nami asked with pleading eyes. Can you? Will you? Teach us? Of course anything for my friends. Although armament might take many months. And everyone has a specialty. I can try but we will need a ship to train on. Watching their faces light up. Asterisk time skip asterisk. We arrive at a beach with cliffs all around and a 30 feet wide ledge going from the bottom of the cliff to the top. As we start to head up the ledge to go into the island we hear someone speak up. A young man speaks up from the top of the hill. Stop right there if you value your lives. You are in the presence of the captain of the Usopp pirates, and his crew of 30,000 men. Seeing flags waving in the bushes. If you leave now I will let you leave with your lives. You mean you and the three kids. Kids scream ah they found us out run. Usopp yelled don't run away we can take them. Seeing the pirates started to walk forward again. He raises his slingshot and draws it back. Not another step. I'll shoot. I let my hat shadow my face now that you have drawn your weapon are you prepared to use it. Because I can tell you one thing, weapons are not meant for show they are meant for action. Raising my head at him. Seeing his legs shaking like crazy I decided to push it one more step. Also if you hurt my crew. Disappearing and reappearing beside him I will retaliate. 
Usopp yelled and stumbled away from me falling over the side and tumbling down the hill. Ah. Looking up at the hill to see me gone. He looked back at the rest of us to see us all laughing. Easy there Usopp we didn't come to cause trouble. And I expected you to defend your town. After all you are Usopp's son. Usopp, now shocked, jumped to his feet. How do you know my dad? Shanks came to my island when I was a kid, even saved my life. Also. Yasop would not stop talking about you. Told me when I set out on my own to look you up. Yusop now standing with pride. Well come on then I will treat you to lunch and you can tell me how much my dad bragged about me. I know this great cafe in town. Asterisk time skip asterisk. After eating our meal we all sat around the table and I told them of when Yusop trashed the mountain bandits. Yusop looks at me confused. You mean he didn't use his gun? Well as far as shooting that is. Sests. Yeah I asked him the same thing he said something about it being overkill if he did that. Then everyone started laughing. Nami looked sad now guess mountain bandits are just as bad as some pirates. Not necessarily Nami. After what happened my grandfather took me to some mountain bandits that basically ran an orphanage. Dodden was the leader and she acted like a den mother. Sests. Rough around the edges but a good heart. All things aren't black and white there are good and bad people in every profession. Then looking down Nami then said I will have to keep that in mind. Looking at the clock Usopp spoke up oops I am late. There is an inn just up the street. I will catch you all later. Rushing out. A few minutes later three children entered holding wooden swords. Give us our captain back, we know you have him. So you three are his crew. Good then all of you will get the same reception we gave him. Cracking my knuckles and giving them a wide smile. Kids scream in terror at We're next run. Jumping up and getting in front of them, Nami holding up her hands easy he left a few minutes ago. Unharmed. Really Luffy sometimes I wonder if you are an adult yet. Keep thinking that. Stretching my arms I say. Since you kids live here. Can you tell us where we can get a ship? The one with the hat spoke up that's easy Kaya is the rich young lady in the mansion just outside of town. Belly signs appear in Nami's eyes. Mansion did you say? The kid responded yeah her parents were rich merchants who died a year ago lost at sea. We can take you there. Asterisk time skip asterisk. I wonder where Usopp ran off to. Piaman spoke up oh that's easy he comes here every day about this time to tell lies to Kaya. An outraged Nami that's terrible. How could he deceive her like that? Piaman responded quickly no she knows he is lying, but it cheers her up. She is bedridden and really leaves her room. She has been sick since her parents died. Probably depression, it can be debilitating if left unchecked. Which brings up the question, why let her stew in it like that? Shrugging that is very nice of him. As we are getting to the entrance the boys turn to walk around the tall hedge. We're not going in the front. Shaking his head no. Piaman responded the head butler hates Usopp and keeps him away. So Usopp made an opening around the side. We get to the secret opening and enter finding Usopp on a branch of a tree sitting across from him in an open window on the second floor was a young lady laughing. Hey Usopp are you going to introduce us to the young lady? The woman spoke up are they part of your crew? In a worried voice why yes they are. They are the Usopp pirates. Sests. Keep telling yourself that Usopp. Afraid not young Miss Kaya, though we are good friends. I am here to inquire about if you had a ship. A butler blurts out what is the meaning of this. 
Miss Kaya you should not be associating with these hoodlums. Kaya speaks up they were asking about a ship Claudador. Claudador straightening his glasses Miss Kaya I can tell perfectly well they are up to no good. They did not come through the front door, and they are obviously friends with the village idiot Yusuf who is hiding behind a tree. Yusuf jumps down and storms up to Claudador getting in his face. I am not the village idiot. Scoffing Claudador replied please you talk about pirates arriving all the time, you tell tall tales to make yourself look better to Kaya, and you're the son of a no-name pirate. Just as Yusuf draws back to deck Claudador I released a medium level blast of Haki on both of them stopping then both almost bringing them to their knees. I would be very careful how you choose your next words. Because the man you just insulted is the head sniper on a Yanko's crew. The very same crew that saved my life as a boy. So I take a personal offense to people who look down on them. Straightening his glasses he cleaned his throat I take it back that his father is a nobody, however his is a pirate. Looking at me challengingly. I take no offense at that. However you have just made it to my shit list. Watch yourself because I will be. Stepping closer to him. Message received. Claudador gulping I have no idea what you are talking about sir however you are still trespassing. Smiling back now. No problem, I can take a hint. Come on guys let's go. As we left Yusuf followed us. Once we were out of earshot Yusuf asked what was that. Conqueror's hacky, it allows someone to impose their will on others, it is extremely rare. I could tell that he wanted you to hit him to drive a wedge between you and Kaya since she dislikes violence. That's why I hit you with it too. Yusuf looked stunned. Why would he want to do that? I have some theories, but for right now I am keeping quiet. Look Nami, how about you see if you can get a good exchange rate for your treasure, lodging for a few days I have 26,000 belly on me so nothing too extravagant. Just two rooms, one for Zoro and myself and one for you. Seeing her smile. Zoro waves us off don't worry about me I like sleeping under the stars. Okay one for each of us then. Watching her nod. Why is she still blushing? I knew I forgot to ask Mimic something important. While you are doing that I will take a walk with Yusuf and let him tell me all he knows about a certain butler. Asterisk time skip asterisk. Laying on the ground by a tree overlooking one of the beaches under the cliff till mid afternoon. So from all you told me nobody knew Claudador till he showed up here two years ago. Yusuf looks at me exactly I can't put my finger on it but something always feels off to me. Maybe you have observation hacky. Pointing over the ridge behind me. Maybe that guy knows him. Yusuf crawled over to the ledge and looked over seeing two people. One of whom is Claudador. How did you know you can't even see them from where you are? Tell you later right now watch and learn. As the two down below told we learned that the person being met was Django, and Claudador was actually Captain Kuro of a thousand plans. We also learned that he plans to kill Kaya after he gets Django to hypnotize her into signing a will leaving Claudador as her beneficiary. All this will take place tomorrow. Also he warned Django that there might be trouble with three newcomers but he will handle us. Causing me to bust into giggles. As they look up they see Yusuf but Kuro tells Django not to worry and nobody will believe him. As Yusuf started to run to the village I grabbed his leg making him fall. Struggling to get free Yusuf tells me let me go I have to warn everyone. I must save her. Holding him down by his shoulders I look into his eyes. And do what exactly? The town won't believe you. You have been yelling that pirates are coming for years. Kaya cares for you but if you try to take her by force she will fight you. She has been deceived by Claudador for years earning her family's trust, with no signs of malicious bone in his body. You showing up like this will scare her. 
and who will she turn to marry and claw the door? You sop crying like crazy but I am too weak there is nothing I can do against him alone much less a whole pirate crew. Well it's a good thing you have friends here. Then squinting at him no. I am not joining your crew. But I will help you save your town and Kaya. Seeing him start to relax. Tell your crew to secretly watch Kaya and get her to safety if necessary. He doesn't plan on going after her until after the pirates attack so we stop them then expose and take down Kuro. We do this my way less people will get her. Got it? Rubbing his face Usopp replied I am just afraid for Kaya. Hell I would be more worried about you if you weren't afraid. Fear is natural and it helps keep us alive. I even fear things, not this, but there are some things out there I fear. However I don't let it control me. Standing up and holding out my hand. Don't worry we will get him. Seeing him smile and take my hand. Get your crew and I will get mine. It is going to be a long night. Tell them not to challenge Kuro, he is not what he seems. Seeing him nod. Asterisk time skip asterisk. After we meet at the inn to regroup. Okay how many places can someone get to town? I know you have the beach that Kuro met Django at, the beach that we landed on, and I would assume a port of some kind. Usopp cleared his throat there are two docks Kaya has a private one and the harbor both are at the opposite side from the town and well guarded by a lookout tower. So that leaves the two coast locations. I think they will attempt to come from the one they met at. I disagree. If they come from this way they will have a longer approach through the forest. Also they will get to Kaya's house first. Remember he wants to have the town in a panic so their attention is away from Kaya. My gut says he will attack from where we docked our boat. Nami did you get your treasure exchanged or is some of it still on the ship? Starting to sweat Nami spoke up. Most of it I didn't like how he was valuing some of it. I know the value of what I have. Then I suggest we should get it to a safe place right away. Smiling at her. Now smiling Nami responded right away captain. Come on Zoro let's get moving. Zoro complained why me? Why not Luffy? Looking annoyed. Putting her hand on her hip and pointing at me Nami responded he is planning the defense. That leaves you free to help me. Winking at me. Me and Usopp just shrugged. Asterisk time skip asterisk. We see a ship land with a big black cat on the front bow of the ship. As they land I look at Usopp. Okay you're up let's see those sniper skills as they approach. Pouting Usopp says it would have been better with the oil slick. Huffing I told you they would send people to go around possibly getting by us into town. However more importantly I am not fighting on an oil slope, got it? Releasing a small blast of hacky at him. Watching him pale and hearing giggles from Nami and Zoro. We watch as they gather around Django and charge up the slope. As they got to the top of the hill Usopp started to shoot at them with remarkable aim. I was skeptical at first with his slingshot but my opinion changed when I saw how he used it. Sometimes itching powder, throwing stars, then tobacco sauce to the face, caltrips in front of their feet, even a whiskey bottle breaking on a few of them followed by a flaming star to ignite it. Wow if he learned observation or armament he would be good. Though my gut says observation more than likely. When they reached the second marker Usopp looked at me and I nodded. He takes aim up the slope above where the pirates are. Firing he hit a stick on the side of the cliff causing the landslide of logs and rocks we had set up to fall between the first and second markers. 
cracking my knuckles remember to wait for the right opening Nami before you rob them blind. Smiling at her. Nami smiling back yes sir. Drawing two of his swords Zoro looks at me. Remember I get the swordsman. Ah oh, but there aren't many with clubs. Oh what about the knives? Then losing all playfulness Kuro is mine no matter what he is using. Smiling back Zoro chuckles you can have the knives. Me and Zoro start walking forward as Nami just shakes her head while Yusuf has to pick his jaw up off the floor. Remember Yusuf don't interfere with Zoro's fight unless you want to make him mad at you. Hearing him gulp. As they get near I go into comic routine. Ow would I look like cute kittens with those ears. Can we keep one? Maybe the small one over there. Seeing Zoro smiling and shaking his head. As they attempted to attack us we separated. Okay people with swords to get him, people with clubs over here. I just dodge all the sword strikes up down back stepping. Cool club. Decking him and sending him into the side wall. Next I give a punch to someone's gut sending him down. Someone pointed to his knife and said not a club. Smiling, grabbing the collar pulling him in close. I get knives too. Seeing him cry. I threw him like a cannonball into the ones behind him. Someone with a sword charges at me. I dodge the first few then as he swings again without him knowing I tap the back of the blade giving it enough force to bury it in the log behind me. As he tries to pull it free I hear Zoro call out. Got a metal club over here. Not seeing a clear shot I aim at the wall behind him. Ricochet. Firing at the wall and bounces off and coming in from Zoro's left side hitting the pirate with the mace in the face knocking him into two more. Making everyone pause in shock. Storming up to me Zoro yells hey. What's the big idea? Seeing me looking confused. The other two had swords. Making everyone more drop their jaws now. Hey. They're getting back up. I only knocked out the one I hit. Seeing him thinking then nod. As he turned around I ask. What about this guy? Pointing the one with his sword stuck. Smiling at me if he can't pull it out he is unarmed. Seeing the guy frantically pulling now. Grabbing the 8 inch round by 10 feet log the sword was in at one end with my right hand. I draw it back like a baseball bat and swing. Knocking a half dozen men into the dozen behind them. Strike. Hearing Nami ha 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 ha, Luffy I think you're thinking about bowling not baseball. With a big grin. As they fought Django called out to his ship and two people one big and round the other skinny came out looking like cats. Evan a tail? Wow way too much. They talked with Django and then seeing Zoro almost finished attacking him. As they attacked the skinny one grabbed two of Zoro's swords and threw them down the hill near their captain. As I was about to finish up I saw Nami almost at the swords. Oh shit. Activating second gear I disappeared. As Nami grabbed the swords she looked up to see a ring blade heading at her face. Before it had time to hit a smoking red arm and black hand grabbed it a foot away. I yanked the ring to me pulling Django with the string. Grabbing him around the neck I released a small blast of hacky. I hold the disc up to his face still in my right hand, squeezing it and smashing it into tiny pieces. You almost killed my friend. My voice dripped with malice. Nami I think that you deserve compensation say all their treasure with nobody stopping you seeing him nod as nami turns to leave i get a gut feeling nami stopping her i think he also wants to apologize personally with his hidden stash releasing a medium blast of hacky on him watching him gulp squeaking django replied why yes i do in the captain's quarters the desk bottom drawer secret compartment. Smiling now. 
as I started squeezing harder. Oh okay, oh okay. The jewels are in the chest at the foot of the bed. Flip it over the leg has a key slot to unlock it. Pulling out a key from his pocket. As Nami grabbed the key she smiled at me. Check for traps just in case. As she runs into the ship. I drop Django on his butt as he rubs his neck. What is the meaning of this? Asterisk time skip asterisk. Two men charge at me wearing cat attire. And three inch long claws on each finger. Swinging them like two girls in a slapping contest. Really those two are no more than scared guards. I don't even need two swords for them. Sheathing one of my swords. Right before they got to me they changed. One jumped in the air with the sun behind him, then the big one lunged at me when I looked up. Then I push the big guy back as I hear the other land behind me. Then I spun around slashing where I thought he was. Making him jump in the air again landing beside his partner. Alright no more nice guy. Putting my sword in my mouth and reaching for my other two. What? Where are they? Looking for these. The skinny one chimed. As I place my sword back in my hand and lunge for him his big brother charged blocking me. As I watched my swords being thrown down the hill I am bombarded by both of them. Man they are fast. If I had hacky like Luffy they wouldn't have gotten the drop on me so easily. Ok head in the game. I battle on and on taking minor hits one after another nothing too bad but they add up. Just then my swords come flying in my direction. I jump into the air surprising my opponents. Placing my sword in my mouth I grab the two swords by the hilt slinging the scabbards to the side drawing my swords as I landed. Now smiling at them. Payback time. Attacking both of them. The impact was blocked by both. One sliding him back a few feet the other went flying. Before the one on his feet could recover I attacked again Onigiri slashing him and sending him down. Seeing the other one land I changed again Onigiri he blocked but this time was thrown back so fast when he hit the wall he was knocked unconscious. That's twice I understand my opponents I won't let it happen again. What is the meaning of this? Asterisk present asterisk. As I walk back up the hill to Zoro. I see the black cat pirates gathering around Django. Zoro I know you aren't badly hurt but I need to burn off some steam after what almost happened to Nami. Plus I wanted to show off how useful observation hacky can be. Seeing him nod and sit down. On top of the hill looking down with a gym bag is Kuro. Looking very annoyed. Didn't I say I would handle them why are all of you on the ground? Yelling back Django retorted they aren't normal. Kuro straightening his glasses didn't you use your hypnosis on them. Sighing you have 3 minutes before I kill everyone on this beach encoding you. Pulling out another swinging disc looks up to see Luffy calmly walking down the slope. Kuro, there might be a problem with hypnotizing them. Getting annoyed Kuro asks and why is that you always told me you could hypnotize anyone. Django in a shocked voice he's wearing a blindfold. Getting a tick mark Kuro yelled then it should be easy to supercharge your men and finish him, it's just one man. You'll regret that. I hope Kaya has enough sense to stay hidden. Feeling their power increase and become more primal the grunts attack. I start bobbing and waving around like a drunk man trying to dance. Rolling on the ground, jumping up in the air. Sometimes I was walking on my hands. All the while I worked my way closer to the middle of them. Then I started to spin like a top in a tight spiral. Spinning top shot. I let my fists go out in all directions looking like bullets. Every shot hits dead on, I use hacky on the weapons to break them and normal punches on people not to kill. Less than 20 seconds later I stopped with all of them on the ground unconscious. Staggering around like drunk we. Around and around I go. We. 
Hysterically Django yelled now before he gets his bearings back. The two brothers lunged at me hoping to hit at the same time each with a hand lunged forward while the other drew back for a second attack. When the two brothers are about to connect I laced my fingers and my hacky covered hands with their outstretched ones. Spinning them around so we look like one of those propeller stick things Makino gave me as a kid. You know the ones that you spin around in your hands then let go watching them fly into the air. I let the little one go, sending him tumbling towards the cliff wall. Then I stopped bringing the big brother around with his back to the sea setting him down. Staring well actually facing actually him since I still have the blindfold on. I grab his shirt with my right hand and step back with my left. I extend my arm looking like a pitcher in wind up. Pointing at his little brother just getting to his feet. Batter up. Throwing the big one with enough force to send both of them into the cliff wall leaving an impact crater causing a few rocks to fall partially covering them. Turning to the ship I give a dramatic bow to a shocked Nami while removing my blindfold. Enraged Kuro spoke up. Fine, I will deal with them myself. Then you and I Jango are going to deal with Kaya. No you aren't. You aren't going to hurt anyone else. Kaya said standing behind Kuro pointing a gun at him with both hands. Straightening his glasses with his palm Kuro regained his composure. Miss Kaya you need to go back to the safety of the mansion. I will handle this. Kaya with shaking hands no I am not listening to you anymore. I went looking for Mary because he didn't bring breakfast and found him in your studio bleeding from multiple cuts. He told me you had sent everyone home for the day, and you sliced him up forcing him to sign something as a witness. Then left him to die while coming here to meet someone who was late. With a sad face Kuro lowers his head. You are a good person, Miss Kaya. You won't harm anyone. I know you better than you know yourself. Your mother was so proud of how you saw the good in people. Taking a step towards her. She always said you had your father's compassion. Taking another step. Shaking Kaya raised the gun to his chest level. No more. Don't talk about them. Kuro takes another step now two feet away. All those times we talked about violence solving nothing. Slowly reaching for the gun. It is just an endless cycle of destruction corrupting the soul. Putting his hand on the gun gently pulling it out of her hand. Your whole family is so gullible. Swinging the hilt of the gun and knocking her to the ground hitting her in the face. Kaya. Yusuf screams charging Kuro with a knee to the stomach and a blow to the back of the neck with the gun. Usopp falls to the ground next to Kaya. You. Kuro screams. This is all your fault. My perfect retirement plan getting myself beaten up by my own men. Having her father find me and taking me in. Pretending to be a pacifist, of all things. Sabotaging the going Mary's rudder so they would take an inferior ship that could not outrun my crew. Having my crew sink their ship blaming the storm. Oh though the best part the only thing that kept me going was watching you dear Kaya slowly wither away. Denying you the proper treatment. Having you come to me a fellow pacifist for understanding you just to fuel your anguish and worry instead. If you hadn't had Yusuf you would probably have been dead by now from guilt. He gave you hope and happiness keeping your spirit alive. I loaded him and did everything I could to keep him away. But now I get the pleasure of carving him up personally in front of you. Sitting his bag down and reaching in pulling out gloves with one foot knives on each finger. Standing up and straightening his glasses with the palm of his hand like he always did with the palm avoiding the claws. For all the trouble you have caused me Yusuf I will take my time. Before he can attack I appear in front of him crossing my arms. You will have to go through me first. Kuro squinting at me. Oh you will pay but first I will gut him. Stepping back and tapping his feet a few times he disappeared. So did I, 
all around Yusuf and Kaya who were now huddled together. Then we appear. Me with black forearms and his claws against them. Impossible. Now one is faster than me. Kuro yelled. Disappearing again. Kuro appears on the ground with a bloody lip. Please my grandfather is faster and hits harder than you. Standing between him and the two. Jumping up and taping his feet Kuro smirks. You can't protect everyone, how about that thief of yours? Disappearing. The whole cliff shook and there was a big impact crater in the side of the cliff halfway down the incline. I stand between the crater and Nami smoking and with a red color. You should have taken the hint and dropped the plans leaving town when I gave you that warning. But oh no you had to push it. My crew is off the target list come after me or you will be sorry. Seeing him tap his feet to the ground activates his speed. Another impact crater near Zoro. Last warning, leave Kaya and my friends alone. As he taps the ground again I don't even need Haki to know where he is attacking next when he disappears. This time 15 feet away from Kaya and Yusuf is a giant crater on the ground 10 feet wide 8 inches deep in the center. With Captain Kuro in the middle. Both his knees bent at angles they really shouldn't bend, his arms spread wide, blood running down from his nose, and barely breathing. I gave you a chance for me to go easy. Don't mess with my friends. Turning to Kaya is Mary okay? I hope so. I had Piaman get the doctor while the other two treated the wounds with the first aid kit the best they could. Good. Zoro take Kuro to wherever people turn in bounties and tell them you caught him. While I take Nami's treasure and these two back to her mansion to check on Mary. Zoro looking confused asked don't you want the credit? Not too much attention. Besides if I bring him in like this they won't believe me. Pointing out that I was unharmed. Zoro shrugged that's reasonable. Let me guess bring the bounty to Nami correct? Smiling at me and pointing at Nami. Who has made it to the top of the hill dragging two very large sacks, blushing red. Of course what else? I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you liked it subscribe to my channel for more fan fictions like this and goodbye.